Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel, Garden Cold Spring Harbor. I'm in Long Island, New York, Zone 7A. Beautiful, sunny, full day here in Long Island, New York. And in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how I plant some of my spring bloom bulbs in pots and or containers. I plant majority of my spring blooming bulbs in the ground throughout my home property landscape. However, I always manage to save a few bulbs to plant in pots and or containers. And today I'm going to show you exactly how I do that. For those of you looking for their online garden channel that offers tips, tricks, easy yet proven gardening for stick your home gardens to that next level don't go anywhere guys stick around with me today start with going below this video and clicking the subscribe button for those of you who are enjoying the content of my videos if you found my videos to be useful helpful informative don't forget to click the bell icon as well youtube will send you notifications every time i'll upload new gardening videos now come with me let me show you exactly how i plant my spring blooming bulbs in pots and or containers. There are many possible reasons as to why we want to plant our spring blooming bulbs in a pot or a container. Now, whether you're planting your bulbs in a nice, large, fancy looking container, or whether you're planting them in cheap, reusable plastic containers that you might have laying around from some previous plants that you planted, so the great thing about planting our spring blooming bulbs in a plastic container is that when the spring season comes and our bulbs will be in full bloom, you can easily pop them right out of this plastic container and transplant them to a nicer, fancier looking container as if you bought them from a garden center or a nursery. And imagine how much money you could save in the spring by planting these bulbs now in the fall in a reusable cheap plastic container and then transplanting them to a nicer container in the spring season. So there may be various reasons as to why we want to pot our bulbs, spring blooming bulbs in a container versus directly into the ground. Some of us already have existing annuals growing in our nicer containers and say the weather is still very mild, still on the warmer side and our annuals are still blooming. They're still doing great. So why pull them out? Why throw them out? We can let these annuals do their job continue blooming and then we can transplant our blooming spring bulbs later on in the season. Another thing to consider when planting bulbs in a container, say you are planting them directly in a heavy, nicer, beautiful container. Don't forget guys, once you add the soil, moisture, whether you water the soil, whether Mother Nature watered the soil via rain, via snow, via hail, don't forget how much extra weight that soil and that moisture will add to that already heavy container. And depending on the weather during the winter season, depending how warm or how cold it's going to be, you might have to relocate your containers from one location to another. It is so hard to move such a heavy, large container versus a smaller plastic container, which weighs so much less, even with the soil and the moisture content in it. So the next very important fact to mention is choosing the container. So what kind of a container can and should you choose to plant your spring blooming bulbs in? What size container should you select and choose? So now, for those of us who are very crafty and like to, per se, decorate our own containers and say you want to keep the blooming 
flowers in that same container in which you're gonna plant them now in the fall. Say you want to use this existing container and you don't want to transplant your flowers in the spring. Then you should choose a larger size container, which then in turn, you can place somewhere, maybe on your patio, maybe by your front door, maybe on your balcony, etc. If you don't mind the coloring, great. If you are crafty, if you know how to decorate it, whether with ribbons, whether with some kind of paper, whether with some kind of plastic, then that's even better, guys. Now, if you like to transplant our spring blooming flowers into nicer containers, then you might consider planting them now in a smaller sized container. Because remember, you want to be able to pop them right out and transplant them to a nicer, larger container. Also, by using smaller containers, you're able to plant multiple bulb varieties. Hence, you can have multiple types of flowers in the spring in your nicer container. Say you plant tulips in one, red tulips. In the next container, you can plant pink tulips. In the next container, you can plant white or pink hyacinths. Maybe in another one, you want to plant white or yellow crocus, guys. So possibilities are absolutely endless. And of course, it's much easier to pop out and transplant your plants when you have them growing in smaller sized containers. Very important thing to note, whatever container you're using, whatever size, make sure your containers have plenty and plenty of drainage holes. That is absolutely crucial because if our bulbs throughout the entire fall and winter season will sit in soggy, wet soil, and don't forget the rainfall in the fall, the snow in the winter, if there is not enough drainage in our containers, the bottom of our containers, our bulbs are at a risk of rotting out inside that soil before they even get to bloom for us in the spring season. So now the next question that may arise is, what kind of soil do we need to use when planting our spring blooming bulbs in our pots or containers? I like to use potting mix. This one is by Spoma Organic, organic potting mix. But by all means, guys, if you have other potting mix laying around in your house or your garage, use any brand you can get your hands on. This happens to be the one I use, but any potting mix will do the job. So now, next question that will arise is, from many of you guys, is do we fertilize at the time of planting or do we not fertilize at the time of planting? An answer to that question will heavily depend on what are your final outcome for your spring blooming flowers will be come spring. Meaning, do you intend to keep your flowers in the same container in the spring in which you're gonna plant them now in the fall? Meaning, are you just going to take this larger container and place it on your balcony or in your backyard or on your porch or Come spring, you already know that you're going to be popping them out and transplanting them to maybe larger, maybe nicer, maybe more attractive looking container. So the next very important aspect to address when it comes to planting our spring blooming bulbs in pots or containers is what type of fertilizer to use and when to use it. Meaning, do we apply fertilizer at the time of planting our bulbs and pots or containers, or do we wait until spring season and fertilize then? Now, the fertilizer I like to use and choose to use on any and all of my flowering bulbs, regardless of the bloom season, is the Bulb Tone by Espoma Organic. It's an excellent organic fertilizer specifically made for uh, 
flowers that bloom from bulbs. You can use any other slow release, you know, granular fertilizer when you're planting your spring bulbs. Now, if you know that come spring, you're going to keep your blooming flowers in that same container in which you planted them fall season, then yes, you should fertilize now in the fall at the time of planting. You need to add a diligent, generous amount of fertilizer at the time of planting. Say you know that come spring, you will essentially be transplanting your flowers from a smaller container, plastic container, to a nicer, larger container. Then, in that case, you can skip the fertilization process now at the time of planting. And when you will be transplanting your flowers in the spring, then you can add fertilizer to that soil of the larger container at the time of transplant. So these are the two options that you have when it comes to fertilization. So now let's talk about spacing requirements. So when it comes to spacing, you can absolutely disregard the instructions on the back of our bulb packet. And let me explain to you why. Well, think about it. Depending on the size of the container that you are going to be using, whether it's a smaller one or a larger one, if you follow the spacing instructions that are listed on the back of the bowl packets, most case, the instructions say that you should uh, leave about five to six inches of spacing between each bowl. So if you follow those instructions, especially when it comes to planting in smaller containers. How many bulbs do you think you can fit in one container? Two, maybe three. What about larger containers? What are you going to fit? Five bulbs, six bulbs, seven bulbs? You're not going to get that bouquet effect that you want to get. So when I plant my spring blooming bulbs, I place them as close to each other as possible. In fact, I allow the bulbs to touch each other. This way you're going to fill up the entire container and when they bloom, you're going to get that abundant, ginormous bouquet-like effect that you're looking to get. Now let's talk about the depth. What depth should you abide by when planting our spring blooming bulbs? So the same depth as you would plant them if you're planting them directly in the ground. So that six inch depth rule still stays and still applies, even when you're planting your bulbs in containers. So remember, you should not put too much soil in the very beginning. Again, depending how tall or how shallow your container is, Make sure you leave at least six inches of that spacing for that depth, as well as enough spacing on top of our container. So then when you either you water or Mother Nature will water, your container will not overfill and will not over flood. Another very, very important rule, very important, is the moisture level. We must always, always check on the moisture level, guys too much moisture your bulbs will rot before they even get to bloom too little moisture they they just won't even sprout guys for those of you who live in wetter climate zones say you have very heavy rains in the fall lots of snow in the winter and if you are keeping your containers outside for the duration of the fall and winter seasons and you know you're going to get a lot of rain a lot of ice a lot of snow in the forecast you might have to cover your containers but with either a wooden board some sort of a tarp some sort of a plastic sheet to make sure that the soil does not get all of that excess moisture we do not want our bulbs to rot so be very mindful and aware of that moisture is very very crucial for those of you guys who live in dry 
climates. You might have to water your containers intermittently throughout the entire fall and winter seasons. You, you might have to check on them periodically, say twice a week. And if you feel that the soil is very dry, you will have to water them. Because if there is not enough moisture in our soils, soil, our spring blooming bulbs will desiccate before they even get to sprout. Now, where can we keep our containers after we are done planting our bulbs? So, the bulbs have to be kept in temperatures of 35 degrees Fahrenheit to 45 degrees Fahrenheit for a duration of at least 12 weeks. So tulips, hyacinth, daffodil, and crocus do have different amount of time that they need to be kept at that cold temperature in order to sprout, to grow, and to bloom. So tulips, need anywhere from 14 to 16 weeks of 35 to 45 degree weather to sprout and to bloom. Daffodils need around 12 weeks of 35 to 45 degree weather or temperature in order to sprout and bloom. Hyacinths need about eight and then crocus needs about six or seven or so, so less. However, say you live in a warmer, climate zone and you cannot just leave your containers outside because you know your temperatures will be way above 45 degrees the entire fall and winter season. What can and what should you do? You should wait. You should definitely wait. So now you must place your bulbs in a refrigerator for that duration of time before you plant them in the ground or even in a container. Many of us have a spare refrigerator in the garage, which is even better than you're not taking up your kitchen refrigeration space. But remember, if you do not put your bulbs through that dormancy phase, through that cold period phase, especially those of you who live in warmer climate zones, do not expect your bulbs to sprout and to bloom. So, great place might be outside, might be in some sort of an unheated shed, maybe unheated basement, unheated garage, some kind of a, um, I don't know, cellar. Any of those options will work as long as the temperatures are between 35 to 45 degrees. If you know, uh, you know, the temperature is going to get way too cold, you can move the container inside. You know the temperature is too warm inside, yet cooler outside. You can always move that container outside. Remember those numbers though, 35 to 45 degrees for at least 8 to 12 weeks. The longer, the better. Now, we're going to start by adding our potting mix to the bottom of our container. Remember the 6 inch depth rule. Make sure your container has plenty of drainage when you're adding the soil. So why six inches, guys? Your flowers will be larger. The stem will be thicker and stronger if you do abide by the recommended six inch depth rule. Again, for those of you living in zones eight and above, make sure you pre-chill your bulbs in a refrigerator prior to planting them because zones eight and above are considered warm climate zones. So here you go. Remember, do not put too much. Do not overfill like so. Maybe one more handful. I think this is perfect. I'd rather have a little more than six inches of depth than less. Now, so in this container, I'm going to be planting my mammoth orange tulips. I think that's going to be beautiful when they all will sprout. It's going to be stunning. They have nice, uh, large uh, orange yellow blooms. So let me show you now exactly how I place the bulbs. Remember, ignore the spacing rule. 
as if you follow the rule, you're only gonna get so few bulbs. So here you go, guys. Remember, by the way, the more rounder end of the bulb is the bottom. You could see where the roots is gonna grow right over there. And the pointy side is the top side. So now I'm going to place them as compactly to each other as I possibly can. Let's see how many of these larger bulbs I can fit. And by the way, these are beautiful large bulbs. Here you can even see where the root system is starting to grow. Make sure you place them pointy side up like so. I like to compactly plant them. So again, you see how the bulbs are touching each other? I'm not leaving any extra space between the bulbs as I want to get that abundant, lush bouquet effect once they bloom, like so. Let's see how many bulbs I can actually fit. You see guys, when you place them compactly, you can fit quite a few bulbs. I think this is gonna be our last one. So let's see, three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 bulbs in this container. So now what's next? The next step, so I am going to keep my bulbs, these specifically in this existing container. I will not be transplanting these. So what do I do next? I will add a diligent amount of bulb tone fertilizer like so directly to my bulbs generous amount and now i will top off my bulbs with more potting mix like so remember you want to leave some space on top because you must consider the moisture level and you don't want to over flood your container i like to give it a little tap like so Keep going till you have what about what an inch to an inch and a half of space left on top like so perfect now since the soil that I'm using is dry hasn't been watered hasn't been moistened I will water this container a little bit you don't want to over water it but you should add against some moisture because I don't want these bulbs to desic desiccate before they even sprout and bloom. Maybe another handful or so, like so. Guys, this is perfect. Give it a little tap. And now all I have to do is water the soil and place it in a nice, shady, cool location. For those of you who are planting hyacinth bulbs, I highly recommend that you wear and use gloves, gardening gloves. Why? Because hyacinth bulbs do have a tendency to make your skin itch, especially if you're going to touch your face afterwards. So do use protective gardening gloves when planting hyacinth, whether in containers or in your home garden. Now, this is it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me here on this gorgeous fall day in Long Island, New York Zone 7A. In today's video, I showed you step by step how I plant my spring blooming bulbs in pots or containers. I gave you all the proven, easy tips that you one needs to know when it comes to planting spring blooming bulbs in containers. If you enjoyed the content of today's video, if you found today's video to be useful, helpful, informative, show me that support by clicking thumbs up below. Leave your comment in the comment section below as well, guys. Let me know, do you plant spring blooming bulbs in containers at your house? If so, share some pictures with me, guys. I would love to see how beautiful your containers look in the spring. 
for those of you who haven't yet subscribed to my garden channel garden cool spring harbor what are you waiting for guys super easy for you to do yet super rewarding and pleasing to me knowing that you guys enjoy watching my videos that you find the content of my videos to be helpful useful and informative in your own home garden click the bell icon if you want to get notifications from youtube every time i'll upload a new card now be healthy happy be well each and every single one of you and happy gardening guys and i'll see you again in my new upcoming gardening videos bye guys